I eliminated the top 50 NBA players from existence. So with the likes of Giannis, LeBron, Curry, and more just completely vanished, we are going to see what an NBA world without those top 50 looks like. Let's find out who would win MVP, who would take the league over as the best player, and what team is going to win the championship. Boys, when I say top 50, I mean there's literally no player left in the NBA after I eliminated all those players. That is over an 85 overall. So if we scroll through the rosters, you guys are going to see, man, there's some pretty bad teams. There's no players like LeBron, Kawhi. There's no solidified superstars in the league anymore so this should be very very interesting let's see what happens in the nba with basically all of its superstars gone all of these teams are pretty mid and we're gonna see what happens let's get into it man no players over an 85 overall let's jump into season one and see what happens because i'm honestly as curious as you are so guys the mvp goes to cj mccullum now listen he low-key might be a top 50 nba player but i left him just outside so he didn't get eliminated from the league and even with luka gone i still expected him to win mvp but shout out to cj for taking it home guys the rookie of the year is chet holgram the sixth man of the year is sangoon so a lot of young players are winning awards rob williams is the deep point not bad pretty good stats right there 2.5 blocks in a steal a game can't really go wrong with that and the most improved player is Nas reed so with everybody out of the nba this man is, you know, stepping up and putting up pretty good numbers. So, guys, the All-NBA first team, I mean, we obviously got MVP CJ. We got Ben Simmons, Julius Randle, Evan Mobley, and Chris Stapps Porzingis. Now, I don't even know what to say about this. That is just an insane All-NBA first team. I mean, this is something that will never happen in real life with all the good players in the league. But, unfortunately, they're all gone. The second All-NBA team, Fred Van Fleet, my guy Fred, Terry Rozier, RJ Barrett, Pablo Banchero, or rookie already making second All-NBA team is crazy, and Vucevic. In the All-NBA third team, we got Jamal Murray, Tyrese Halliburton, John Collins, Miles Bridges. I mean, maybe All-NBA prison squad. I don't know. Jared Allen as well. Listen, these are players that would never make these type of teams, but since everybody's gone, I mean, we have probably the most unique teams of all time. And boys, if you're interested, we're going to run through this All-NBA defensive first team. Boom, you guys can see Ben Simmons kind of headlines that team. Second team, we got Pat Bev. It's about time. He actually deserves that. We got Mitchell Robinson, which is kind of, you know, out of pocket right there. And then, of course, all rookie teams don't really matter because I didn't take any rookies out of the league. So, guys, by the way, I didn't even really eliminate 50 players in the NBA. I eliminated closer to, like, 40 because I only eliminated everybody that was an 86 overall or higher. And you guys can see... I'm not going to lie. These top 10 NBA players are pretty crazy. We got Jamal Murray putting up the most points per game in the league, which is kind of insane. We got Tyler Hero, Klay Thompson, Fred Van Fleet behind him as well. We got Brogdon in the top 10 NBA players. Listen, a reality like this would just mean more team-based basketball, I guess. I mean, that's pretty cool. So guys, the teams that did the best, I mean, the Hawks actually clinched first seed in the East and taking a look at their team, I mean, Aaron Holiday, DeAndre Hunter, John Collins, Clint Capella. This team is really not that great. I mean, I guess they have some good bench depth, but apart from that, I don't know how this team was the first seed. Then, of course, first seed in the West. The MVP came from this team, so it kind of makes sense. The New Orleans Pelicans, CJ McCollum, a bunch of young guys. I mean, this kind of makes sense because they do have a very young core, so I guess those players just ended up carrying them. So guys, these are the teams that made the playoffs. I mean, I don't think there's any crazy surprises. I mean, on the East side, I guess you could say the Knicks being a five seed is kind of insane. The Pacers and the Pistons also made the playoffs, which is a little bit insane. And then on the West Coast side, the Lakers made the playoffs. That is actually probably the most insane one there. And the Spurs are the sixth seed somehow. Okay, this is getting a little bit out of pocket. But let's go ahead and simulate round one and see what happens. So, guys, the teams left after round one are the teams you see on the screen. To be honest, if anybody but the Bucks win a championship, I would be pretty excited because that is kind of a newer team winning a chip. So, let's see what happens here in round two. Boys, I'm going to go ahead and simulate this round as well. And then we're going to kind of go deeper into the Eastern Conference and Western Conference Finals. But we get the Pelicans versus the Grizzlies. So, the first versus the second seed. It makes sense. And on the East Coast side of things, we got the Bulls against the Raptors, my team. So, hey, man, this is going to be interesting. So guys, the Western Conference matchup is right here. The Pelicans versus the Grizzlies. I mean, these two teams could honestly both go to the finals. They both have pretty good sides to them. Obviously, you know, the Pelicans have the MVP. And CJ McCollum was not an 86 overall. I promise you he was not 86 overall at the beginning of the year. I think he was like an 84, so I left him in the league. I would have took him out. But listen, man, here goes nothing. By the way, guys, this is the East Coast side of things. I mean, the Bulls have Lonzo, Caruso, Gordon Hayward, Pat Williams, and Vucevic. The Raptors have pretty much their same team without Siakam. So we're going to see what happens here. Let's go ahead and see what two teams make it to the finals. So guys, it is 3-1 for Memphis. It looks like, you know, CJ McCollum, which is the MVP, is about to get upset in the Western Conference Finals. And the series on the East Coast side of things is actually 2-2. So this one is pretty interesting. All right, guys, the Raptors win game five. We're going to go ahead and simulate through another game. Let's see. Okay, there's going to be a game seven on the East Coast side of things. On the West Coast side of things, it is 3-2 for Memphis. All right, guys, let's see if the Pelicans can take it to game seven. So both sides are going to game sevens or not. And both sides, the West and the East, are going to be going to a game seven. 
So guys, in game seven of the Eastern Conference Finals, let's see who takes this home. Okay, Chicago gets a lead. Toronto fights back. It's close. It's going to go down to the wire. Let's jump in. So guys, the Bulls are up by seven. The Raptors don't really have much of a chance right here. Gary Trent with the basketball to Thaddeus Young for three against his former team. He bricks it. And it looks like the Bulls are headed to the NBA Finals. All right, boys. It looks like the Grizzlies are about to blow a lead in the Western Conference Finals. It looks like the Pelicans are taking this home. And they do take it home. Jonas was the Western Conference Finals MVP. And Drummond was the Eastern Conference Finals MVP. I don't even know what to say about this, bro. Two centers? What happens to the NBA? So, boys, this is the Finals matchup. Listen, we got MVP CJ on the one side. And then, of course, on the other side of things, we got... You know, kind of a balanced team, I guess you could say. I'm going to pick the Pelicans to win. You guys can comment down below who you think is winning this series. But let's jump right into it. All right, game one, boys. Game one actually goes to the Bulls. Can they pull the upset off? Okay, the Pelicans get a game back. There we go. 1-1, one, 2-1 one, one for Chicago. Game four, they tied up at two. All right, guys, game five. Whoever wins this is most likely going to win this series. Let's see what happens. The Bulls take that home. Oh, no, bro. Guys, game seven of the NBA Finals. It is back and forth. Let's see who takes the first chip home in the first season. And it looks like... Oh my God, that might've been a buzzer beater, bro. That might've been a buzzer beater by Chicago, but they take the chip home. So shout out to the Bulls. The first time they've won since MJ. Listen, man, I don't even know what to say about that, but the Pelicans definitely got upset onto season two. Vucevic was finals MVP. Listen, this would probably never happen with, you know, the top 50 in the league, but hey man, all I gotta say is shout out to Vucevic for winning that. Guys, the very first pick in the draft goes to the Thunder. So they're about to get Victor Wembat most likely, which means be on the lookout for them this next season. So guys, like I said, the Thunder will be a team to watch out for, but I did not mean for this man to win MVP. So all of a sudden in his first year, after the top 50 players got taken out, Victor Wembat is the best player in the league. Shout out to him, 24-10-2 with a steal and two blocks per game on those shooting splits is absolutely insane. Guys, Victor wins MVP. He obviously wins Rookie of the Year if he wins MVP. Six Man of the Year is Chet Holgram. The Thunder looks stacked so far. Depoy is Rob Williams, although it could have easily went to, you know, Wembat as well. And then, you know, most improved player is Goga, which is kind of random, but uh, let's get into the playoffs. All right, the All-NBA first team has two rookies. They have Scoo Henderson on here and Victor Wembat, along with a bunch of young players. And Ben Simmons, for some reason, is apparently doing amazing. I don't know why. I don't know how, but he's cooking. All NBA second team, we got Scotty Barnes, Josh Giddy, a very young team. Again, Tyrese Halliburton. You know, I don't know how Julius Randle snuck up on there, but hey, shout out to him too. The third team got Cade, RJ Barrett, Keldon Johnson, Tyler Hero, and DeAndre in. So, hey, man, shout out to all these guys. By the way, some of them are well over an 86 overall now, but when this started, they were way under. Like DeAndre in, for example, started at like an 84, and he's already at an 89. Real quick, the defensive teams, there's the first one and there's the second one. Not too bad. Draymond once again makes it as well. And he's on the Spurs. Don't punch anybody over there, bro. Pop is not letting that fly. I mean, guys, the league leaders, there's actually a debate between these two players right here. Tyler Hero and RJ Barrett were leading the league in the most amount of points. Victor Wembat and School Henderson were three and four. And then this random rookie as well was fifth. I don't even know what to say, but the league has just flipped upside down. They got rookies out here being the best players and winning MVP, which is kind of insane. Guys, standings wise, the Pacers were actually the best team in the East Coast because, I mean, Porzingis developed. Tyrese Halliburton jumped to an 89 overall, so this team is very solid. They got good bench players as well. And then, of course, on the West Coast side of things, like I said, be careful of the Thunder because they have a lot of young players. And Victor Wembat is already an 86. Chet Holgram is an 82. And Josh Giddy is an 87. And they got Pat Bev. This team is low-key dangerous. So these are the teams that are in the playoffs. The Sacramento Kings and the Utah Jazz are somehow in the playoffs. The Rockets are the second seed. The Thunder are the first seed. On the East Coast side of things, I mean, the Knicks are in the playoffs. The Magic, the Pistons, the Pacers. What is going on? I'm going to go ahead and just run through round number one. It literally doesn't matter who gets eliminated. Okay, the Thunder, which is my favorite personally to win the whole thing because of the players they have, are easily through to the second round. All right, guys, round two, we're going to run through this one as well and just see who meets up in the conference finals. We got the Rockets versus the Thunder and the Raptors once again against the Knicks. So guys, this matchup right here is quite interesting. I mean, the Raptors have Miles Turner somehow. Precious Achua is pretty good. Alexander Walker, a Canadian, is on the team as well. And then the Knicks actually have RJ Barrett, who's an 87 and was one of the best players in the league. Guys, on the West Coast side of things, we got the Thunder, who are, in my opinion, going to win it all with that team right there. And then the Rockets, who actually have Jalen Green at an 88 overall, so he is progressing very well. So guys, I started the simulation. Um, the New York Knicks are up 2-0 on the Raptors. The Thunder are up 2-0 as expected. We're going to simulate through another game. The Thunder are up 3-0. The Knicks are up 3-0. So we pretty much have our finals matchup. Bro, this man, Victor Wembat, is already off to a Hall of Fame career too. Western Conference Finals MVP, MVP, Rookie of the Year, and he has a chance to win a Finals MVP. Boys, if you were telling me these two teams were in the Finals in any sort of situation, even in the Finals for the first pick, 
I would just not believe you, but right now, this is the reality of this simulation. We got the Thunder and the Knicks, two great teams, two pretty stacked teams in terms of the NBA today that we're actually, you know, using. So here goes nothing. All right, guys, game one is going to go to the New York Knicks. Game two is going to go to the Knicks. Game three, the uh, literally must win for the Thunder right here. And that pretty much does it. Guys, a must-win game for the Thunder here to even stay alive. And the New York Knicks take it by two points. Listen, man, I'm not going to lie. I cannot see a reality where the New York Knicks win a championship, but Victor Wembat does not get his ring. The New York Knicks get a ring. RJ Barrett finals MVP. This is the only time you're going to see the Knicks win something, so soak it in if you're a Knicks fan. So guys, heading into the third and final year of this simulation, these are the new updated overalls for some of the players. I mean, we got Mobley being the highest overall in the league. We got Cade Cunningham, Jalen Green, Victor Wembat, Tyrese, you got Scotty Barnes, you got Rob Williams, Tyler Hero, just a bunch of players that are pretty young. So let's get into this year and let's see who takes the ring home in year three. So guys, year number three and this man, Victor Wembat, has already been one of the best NBA players of all time. Back-to-back -back MVPs. This man is on pace for literally 20 MVPs if he plays 20 seasons. The rookie of the year doesn't really matter because he's generated. Six man of the year, Leonard Miller. I'm pretty sure he was a rookie last year. We got Wembat taking home the deep point as well. Shaden Sharp for most improved player. And Billy Donovan coach of the year. So that means the Thunder did really good again. All right, guys, all NBA first team. I mean, you got Paolo, you got Victor, you got Mobley. You got literally all young guys and Ben Simmons again somehow. All NBA second team, literally all young guys. Jared Allen as well. I mean, that's not looking too bad. In the All-NBA third team, you got Josh Giddy, Tyler Hero, Julius Randle, somehow, and you got Chris Tapps Porzingis, somehow, as well. All-NBA first defensive teams, I mean, where is Wembat not included at this point? The second team is right there, as well. Jared Vanderbilt, who actually deserves it. He's a really good defender. And, of course, Herbert Jones, as well. So, guys, taking a look at the league leaders, this man, Wembat, played every game this year. He averaged 26.8. He's obviously won the scoring title, as well as MVP, as well as Depoy. This man is doing it all at this point. We got Tyler Hero, Cade Cunningham is the top three players in the league. I mean, a lot of randoms as well. Like, I don't know who this dude is right here or who this dude is, but, hey, man, shout out to, you know, everybody just turning up because the league is open for anybody's taking at this point. Guys, you guys know the drill. We ran through round one. No real upsets. I mean, I guess you could say Portland got upset by, you know, the Kings. And somehow the Kings are on to, you know, round two of playoff basketball, which is unheard of for them. All right, guys, we're going to run through round two as well because who really cares? Somehow the seven seed Orlando Magic against the Pacers on this side. And then, of course, Houston against OKC rematch. Here we go. So the Magic, who are actually seven seed, have one of the better teams that I have seen in this simulation. They have pretty much all 82s and up. A lot of young players again. You got Paolo, you got Franz carrying that team. And then the Pacers are one seed and they got a mixture of like vets and young players. Let's see how this goes. Here we go, boys. Let's go ahead and press simulate. The Magic are actually up 1-0 in the East Coast side of things. They're up 2-0 in the East Coast side of things things the series over here is tied though the magic are about to be going to the finals as a seven seed unless they blow a 3-0 and they are actually going to go ahead and sweep the number one seed pacers all right guys the thunder are up 3-1 they should be able to make the finals as well and yes they do giddy finals mvp paulo bonchero is going crazy he wins you know eastern conference finals mvp shout out to both both of those guys let's jump into it another parallel universe you know finals matchup i guess you could say the thunder against the magic who would have ever thought these are the two teams? Honestly, I'm just going to pick the Thunder to win because they got Victor Wembat, so why not? All right, boys, here we go. Can we see Wembat win his first ring? Because this man's pretty much won everything else that you could possibly win in two years already. The Magic are up 2-0. Okay, the Thunder get one back. The Thunder get another one back. Game five, this is a huge one. And the Thunder take it home. So, boys, it looks like the Thunder are about to win a championship. Shout out to Sam Presti for keeping all those picks because it definitely paid off with getting Victor Wembat. So, they're going to take this series 4-2. And this NBA simulation is something I don't even know what to say about because it's been crazy. Boys, the finals MVP is actually not going to go to the Wembat. It is going to go to Josh Giddy. Shout out to him, bro. One of the more mature players, I guess you could say, or one of the more, you know, veteran players in the league because we literally kicked out 50 of them. The boys, Josh Giddy finals MVP, 18 points, 14 assists a game, and eight boards. That is pretty insane. Shout out to them. Shout out to this whole simulation. Listen, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like because it was something definitely different, something that we probably will never see. But hey, I thought it was pretty interesting to bring out for you guys. So leave a like if you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you turn on those notices to see more. And let me know what you guys are trying to see next. Maybe we take out literally the top 100 players. I'll literally make the list and take every single one of them out. Let me know if you want to see that. I'll catch you in the next one, though, man. Peace.